told of his destiny to possess a powerful artifact, only known as the Artifact. Deathspank dedicated his life to becoming a hero to the downtrodden, a vanquisher of evil, and a dispenser of justice. To be known as a true hero, you not only have to be incredibly adept at using a sword, but you have to be versatile as well. Rescuing an orphan may convince bards to sing of your deeds, but not everything can be quite so glamorous. Sometimes you need to just give a sock to a lonely tree in need of disposable clothing. The combat does get repetitive in Death Spank after a few hours, but it's a difficult game to put down because the elements that surround the hack and slash action are so good. Greetings, Demon Witch Havenstens. I am Death Spank. Quirky humor, vibrant art, and a hummable soundtrack make slaying skeletons and running from unicorns fun from beginning to end. Clutching the artifact, a triumph of a lifetime of war and battle, Deathspank fought his way out of the dark cave. But the presence of an artifact that powerful does not go unnoticed by those that seek to possess it. Ancient artifacts have an inflated value. It doesn't matter what they do, or even if they do anything at all. Once this powerful alliteration is in play, everyone wants to get their hands on the prize. Deathspank is after a lightning-shaped rod that holds the power to do... Something. It's not clear. But it doesn't matter. And neither does the story for that matter. The basic plot is a typical fetch quest adventure, but that doesn't make it any less entertaining. <laughs> the world is populated by quirky individuals intent on making the hero of the day, in this case you, do their bidding. The conversations you have with these persistent citizens are always tinged with humor, which makes it a treat to scroll through all the options in the conversation tree and see what crazy thing they'll respond with and the over-the-top voice acting adds to the charm. Oh, no you don't! Don't touch those cherries! It's a well-told story that manages to entertain all the way through. When you're not chatting with the locals, you're more than likely chopping up the wildlife. The objectives vary between fetch quests, kill missions, and a few puzzles thrown in for good measure, but most of the time you'll be slaying the scoundrels who stand in your path. You have eight hot buttons to map weapons, magic, and items to, which gives you a fair bit of versatility in how you want to equip your fighter. Stringing together combos with various swords, axes, and crossbows boosts their damage, so mixing and matching until you find a deadly formula is part of the fun. Combat is generally slanted toward melee because swords are so much stronger than bows and arrows, but there are still some helpful magic spells and buffs to cast to make sure things stay interesting. However, aside from which weapon you want to use, there isn't much strategy in combat. Although you can block in battle, the best tactic is often to just run around hacking at everything in sight and healing when your health gets low. It's not the most sophisticated plan, but it gets the job done. Because of the simplicity, things can drag after a while. There are only so many ways to kill a swamp donkey before you start to just go through the motions. At least death spin can be challenging, especially in the beginning. Most of your quests are optional, and if you ignore these completely and try to get the main objectives done, you won't be strong enough to emerge victorious from a tricky fight. Getting your butt beaten down a few times forces you to think things through before rushing in, but the best strategy is just to do the side missions first. These not only prepare you for the harder fights, but are fun as well. Loot is also a motivator, but it's not quite as entertaining as it can be in other games. You can make sure the game immediately equips the best armor as soon as you pick something good up, so there's little need to fuss around in the menu to don the best protection for a fight. Leveling up is also stripped down so much that it barely plays a part at all. You automatically gain points in health, defense, and other categories every time you earn enough experience points. The only option you have is what stat boost you want, such as an increase to melee damage or walking speed. And this choice is merely for show. By the end of the game, you unlock all of these boosts, so your only choice is which one you want to access first. Sparkles the Wizard! The cooperative play is also stripped. A second player can jump in at any time on the same console, but they play as the googly-eyed Sparkles the Wizard instead of a unique hero of their own. Sparkles doesn't have any armor to worry about or even his own life bar, so co-op play is just a way to increase your fighting power in a jiffy. Looks like a unicorn has been nibbling on this turnip. Even with the stripped co-op and leveling, Death Spank is still loads of fun. The cartoony world is a joy to traverse, and there are so many objectives to complete that it will take quite a few hours to see everything this game has to offer. Death Spank is an easy game to pick up for just a few minutes, but before you realize it, a few hours will have flown by and you still won't understand the mystery of the purple thong. This isn't all the orphans, is it? I might have missed one or two. Oh, I'd really like to...
to have all the orphans back together, if that's all right with you.